Hello and welcome to the Corona Yoga Challenge. Today is 170 and today we are talking about philosophy, and uh, yoga philosophy I should say, and we are talking about svadaya or self-study. So, and it's one of the niyamas and niyamas being the things that we should do, i.e. according to yoga, yoga scriptures if you like, and yoga um, traditional learning. Um, And self-study is basically studying yourself. And and that could be the traditional sort of studying that we think of, which is reading yoga books, reading about poses, reading Patanjali, or the the kind of scripts that you could read um, relating to yoga. Um, Or it could be that it is reading your own spiritual books, whatever feeds you. Um, And it could be that you are not doing yoga and that you have a very, very wonderful self-study and that you are doing all of the yoga niyamas when interpreted from a yoga point of view. So it's not that um, you have to do this to me to follow a, a precise path that you must follow the the steps to get so and so. It's more that these steps can be useful uh, in making conscious what you are probably already veering towards and might, by making it conscious, make it easier for you to engage with that and then to um, then to be to be with that and to encourage that process. So self-study we can do the kind of traditional studying. You can do the studying of your life. So what are your life choices? What are the things that you do in your life that feed you? So do you have a good little practice in the morning of meditation or how you get up or something that works for you? Um, or do you not? Do you have a good habit when it comes to dealing with your finances? I do not. <laughs> So that self-study process of working out, well, what's working well? What can I see in my life that I am appreciating and working well for me that I am doing? What are the things that I would really like to change and and work with better? Um, it could be that that self-study comes into what are the words that you choose to use? What are the communications that you choose to be open to? And how you then work with that. So do you think, yes, we'll have this conversation and then really resent it because you've pushed too far? Do you have a difficult conversation and actually stay present and then be able to work through it and beyond it and find a place of healing or increased connection because of that? So all of these things are self-study. They're how do we perceive the world? What are we doing in response to that? And how can we adapt that? So these are all, in my view, really important things to do in life, but they don't have to be for you. And from how we interact with the world and each other, that also becomes how we react and interact and react to ourselves. So what happens when something goes wrong and you push yourself out of your comfort zone or you are pushed, I'm not quite sure. Um, What happens when in life you are out of your comfort zone and what do you then do with that? Do you tell yourself off for being so stupid as to not have realised before that X was going to happen if you did Y? Do you, are you really, really compassionate? Oh, I'm just going to stay in bed forever. I'm never going to get out and kind of retreat back and hide completely. Do you do a range of those things and then come out? And is there a way to, uh, for you to be kinder to yourself and also to retain your strength would be my question in a time of big challenge. And we're all going to hit them. So it's not like something happens and you do enough yoga and then life gets just ooh, beautiful rainbows all the time. Maybe it does, but let's just say I've not I've not reached that point yet. <laughs> not re- re- reached the point of eternal rainbows. And I think I'm okay with that, actually. I digress. <laughs> so what is it that your mind's doing? 
And do you need to express a little bit more tapas discipline with how your mind works so that if you are tempted to beat yourself up and to tie yourself into knots with your thoughts or even to just engage with the process in such a way where you know that you're not ready to resolve that issue, that that issue, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, like how you're going to, to move house or something, if you're not actually in that process, you, you can't really think it all through. You actually just have to stay present, which is a bit that you might be going to move house. So not tying yourself up into knots with the thoughts of what happens when. And a little bit of that is very pragmatic and sensible. But it's more what happens when the thought process go like, I must solve this now. I must solve it. I must solve it. I must solve it. Because usually when we try to solve something more too quickly, we break whatever it was that we were trying to solve. You know, so it might be like, oh, I really, really am enjoying this in my life. Uh, but it's tricky because of X, Y and Z. What are you going to do about that? Is there a, it, you know, sometimes you have to say, well, I cannot solve my work being not what I want my work to be, or whatever it is just now. At the moment, I have to stay really present with what is it that I would like to be different? What is it? Um, where am I with that? So these are all the processes of self-study. Obviously, there's a massive amount of self-study you can do on the map absolutely massive because it's almost like what you do when you are on your mat doing yoga that is like a, a a magnifying glass on the whole of your life so if you are lying on your back thinking my legs are tight my back is tight my shoulders are uncomfortable I can't stretch enough I should have done more of this earlier I didn't do enough my body's not okay anymore I don't like my body. I don't like the way I feel. This is a waste of time. I'm never going to manage to do yoga today. Uh, I should just give up. I think I'll go and then can you see that's the that's the self study of the mind, but that is on the yoga mat. What's happening in that process of just engaging with attempting to do a little bit of yoga for yourself, rather than going, ah, oh, I am so tired. Everything's out of sorts. I'm just going to lie on my back. So that's why I really, really um, value and think it's really important that sometimes our practice is just to get on the mat and do whatever feels right when you're on your mat. And in time, that will change naturally, rather than trying to push, shove, fit, squish. And there are times for that, but usually yoga mat's not, not that place for it. Within a pose, obviously, there is the self-study of like, oh, which bits of my body are really happy with this movement? Which bits of my body would like to move more? Um, and the kind of physical learning we can do it. There's the emotional learning of how do I feel in this pose? I might be doing this amazing, beautiful pose. And from the outside, you're like, oh, yeah, great, fabulous. But what happens if I look fabulous and I am not there? What happens if I am doing a beautiful pose and I am not engaged with the pose or I am just stiff in myself, in my deepest self? So that's obviously not going to be a great call, is it? Because it needs to be throughout. It's much better to do a smaller, more mediocre pose and to be fully present and really enjoy it because that is what yoga is, is being present and enjoying that space that you have. Um, the other thing that you can then go on to is to looking at your breath so how does your breath move and using that as your self-study because your breath is going to tell you about what the physical body is doing and how you feel and your energy so your breath is such a really valuable tool into self-study because if you watch your breathing you'll notice how very very different it is somebody might say something and you'll find your breath go a little hold they're like oh a little scare uh, and it could just be that they say i don't like the way you and whoever knows what they said next but it's already you've got and you've noticed that little catch it could be that you notice that when you sit in a particular place or you look at a particular plant or you are, for me, like probably at the beach watching the sea, 
that you just go, ah. And there's a really soft, wide, easy, kind of quiet feeling that comes into your breath. But obviously it's a feeling in the rest of the body as well. So I would definitely advise exploring your breath a little bit more. And the last little bit was just to say about the sense of the energy around you uh, and exploring how you think that might be. This is something that is not everybody's thoughts of what they want to do. So it might be like, no, I'm not interested, not my thing. So let it go if it's not your thing. But if it is your thing, it can be really helpful to work out, well, what does the space feel around me? How does the space feel around me in this particular situation? Is there is there something that you can do, whether it's take a breath out, whether it's just change your physical body, whether it's just adapt your mind, that you can have some sense of ability to reflect on what's happening in your space. So your space is the kind of area around your body um, and that you can use that reflection to see what needs to happen next. And it could just be that all you do is reflect because sometimes we come into the body, the energy, and it's almost like the process of like, ah, I can see. And whatever it is that you see, when you really listen to it, it changes it. So it can be quite an important process because just by watching a little bit, I don't know the, the proper physics of it, but when we watch an atom, the atom doesn't move the same way it responds to being watched. When we watch ourselves, we respond differently. There we go. I think I'll end on that nice little thought. When we watch ourselves, we behave differently. So, and I don't mean in that nasty big brother, nippy nippy, um, t- talking you down thing. I mean, when we just go, ah, I'm feeling, ah, I'm here. I hope that's helpful and that you can take it into your yoga and into your life and that it helps you move in the ways you need to move.